It's one thing to hear about a rainbow crack being done. It's a totally different and more exciting thing, I might add, to actually do one. So what I'd like to do in this nugget is spend a few minutes walking you through what we can do specifically to prepare our lab, including downloading the right tools so that we can have a successful rainbow attack. So in this nugget, we'll do the preparation work and in a subsequent nugget, we'll do a demonstration of the attack itself. Here's the setup. First of all, we're going to dump the SAM database from our Windows 2012 server. Now it does require administrative access to do that. Now fortunately, in our nugget on doing a man in the middle attack and sniffing, we've already discovered what that password is. We can use that to basically get a copy of the contents of that SAM database. And there's lots of different tools that we could use. There's a tool called pwdump7. There's another tool called fgdump. And there's many more. So in our lab environment, we'll download and get this file, fgdump, we'll use it to dump the SAM database. And let's make our attack machine this guy right here. So we'll use Windows 10 as our base station. So then on our Windows 10 machine, once we have a dump of the SAM database, we then need to get rainbow tables. Now we can either download rainbow tables, which can be quite huge, or we can generate our own rainbow tables, which may take hours and hours of time. And if we wanna generate our own, there's some tools called rtgen, which is Rainbow Table Generator. There's a program called WinRTGen, which gives you a graphical user interface for generating rainbow tables. Then we're gonna use an application that uses the hashes from that SAM database, uses the rainbow tables that we've supplied it to go ahead and crack the passwords. And for the cracking of the passwords, let's use a program called Rainbow Crack. And this is all done in the safety and security of our own lab environment. We are not doing this against the production system. Let's start on the Windows 2012 server, and I wanna change the security policy for a little bit on this server. And you might ask, why Keith? Why would you wanna change the default security policy? Because there's some password complexity that's required. And in the interest of doing a soup to dessert generation of a rainbow table, I don't wanna to have to generate a rainbow table for passwords that are at least seven characters long and have upper and lower case and alphanumeric. In the interest of time, we wanna create a very simple rainbow table to demonstrate that it can be done. It's also one that you can replicate. So to change the security policy on our Windows server with server manager running, we'll go to tools. And from the dropdown, we're gonna go down to group policy management and select that. And inside of group policy management, I'm gonna expand the forest and expand the domain and expand my nuglab.local. And I have an option here for default domain policy. I'm gonna right click on that. And from the dropdown, select edit. We're gonna edit the default domain policy. Then under computer configuration, we're gonna expand policies. And then under that, we'll expand window settings. And then under that, we'll go to security settings. And let me expand this window a little bit so you can see exactly where that is. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the account policies here at the top of my list over here on the right. So we'll double click account policies and let's modify the password policy. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that. And for the minimum password length, I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the minimum password length and I'm going to set it to one character which in a lab environment will be fine. In production, we'd want it longer. And we'll click on OK. Let's also select the password must meet complexity requirements option and double click on that. And I'm gonna go ahead and say disable. I do not want to have to enforce password complexity, meaning they don't have to have upper and lower case, alphanumeric, et cetera. And we'll click on OK on that as well. And let's go ahead and we can either create a new user or we could modify an existing user and give them a very simple password. So from the tools menu, we'll go down to Active Directory Users and Computers, and let's go ahead and create a new user. So I'll click on the icon to create a new user. Let's go ahead and create Billy, with the logon name of Billy, and we'll click on Next, and then we'll use a password of ABC. Just three characters, lowercase, very simple, ABC. And I'm not gonna make him change his password, and I'll say password never expires, and we'll click on Next. So we'll go ahead and click on Finish, and... <laughs> Password does not meet the password policy requirements. Hmm, let's do this. Let's go ahead and force that policy change that we made. I'm gonna to go to a command prompt. I'm gonna click on the Windows icon, type in CMD, right click on the command prompt, and say from the drop down, run as administrator, and let's do a GP update and press enter. That should do a group policy update. And now that that is done, I'll go ahead and close that window and click OK, and let's click on finish one more time for Billy. There we go. Okay, so we changed the group policy. It just hadn't been implemented yet. So here's Billy the user with a very simple password. So we'll go over to our Windows 10 machine and let's go ahead and bring up a browser. I also have this notice over here on the right saying potentially harmful software detected. That's because we've been downloading tools and other software during these nuggets that indeed are suspicious and possibly harmful.
And we're going to be okay with that in our lab environment because we're not on a production system or a production network where these could really cause harm. So instead of going to Chrome to download these additional tools, I'm just going to write it out of the gate, click on the Windows icon in the bottom left-hand corner, type in Internet, and then launch Internet Explorer because that's going to allow us to download these where Chrome is not going to allow us to download some of these tools. And let's do a search for fgdump and press enter. And fgdump from foofus.net. <laughs> let's go ahead and take a shot at that one. And then there's a link saying version 2.1 is now available, so we'll click that. So let's go ahead and download fgdump 2.10 by clicking on it. And we'll click on save. And that's now in our downloads folder. So we'll use that for dumping a copy of the contents of the SAM database. Next, while we're in the download mode, let's go ahead and download either a rainbow generation tool or rainbow tables. So let's go to oxid.it, press enter. And here under projects, if we scroll down, near the bottom currently is the WinRTGen, which is a graphical rainbow table generator. So we'll go ahead and click on that and we'll save that as well. Another tool that we could use that also has rainbow tables to offer is called OffCrack, O-P-H-C-R-A-C-K. And if we did a quick search for that, let's do an O-P-H-C-R-A-C-K, press enter. So they've got some live CDs you can actually boot from the CD. If we click on downloads here though, they also have the application that we can simply install as a program on a computer. So let's download that one as well. So we'll click on save to save that. And one other example of some tools we could use would be Rainbow Crack. So if we type in Rainbow Crack and press enter, here's project-rainbowcrack.com, the official site will go there. We'll scroll down a little bit. So we'll go ahead and click on the download for the 64-bit version of Rainbow Crack. And my browser seems to be not cooperating too much, so I'll right-click on it, and then we'll go ahead and say Save Target As. And it'll save it as Rainbow Crack 161win64.zip, and click on Save. And I just realized we've downloaded several tools. Let's do a quick review to make sure we know where we're at. For dumping the SAM database, we're going to use FGDump. For the creation of rainbow tables, we can use Win, RTGen, and also as part of Rainbow Crack, it also comes with a rainbow table generator called RTGen. And then for the cracking of the passwords, we could use OffCrack, which has its own rainbow tables that we can download and use as part of OffCrack. Or we can go ahead and use the Rainbow Crack itself to go ahead and load a rainbow table and crack it. And I've got a question for you regarding working and practicing with these types of tools. When is the best time to find out what will or won't work based on a type of operating system that you're hacking? And I would suggest, my friend, that the best time to figure out how and when these work and which options you should use is in practice, in a practice test lab, where you have plenty of time and opportunity to verify what does work or doesn't work based on the operating system and applications that you're trying to attack. And that's the benefit of doing this all in a lab environment as well, is you can get the hands-on practice finding out what really does or does not work in your own lab environment. In this nugget, you and I have done three basic things. We went over the concepts of a rainbow table attack, Secondly, we downloaded some tools, including tools to dump the SAM database, tools to generate rainbow tables, and tools to actually run the attack itself. And third, we modified the security policy on our Windows 2012 server so that when we do the attack, in measurable terms, we can have success in doing it. And I look forward to joining you in that nugget for the demonstration. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.